Greetings travelers and welcome to the third episode in the series of looking back at my 20 something years of MMO history. In episode 2 we explored my thoughts on why I chose City of Heroes as a place to stay while waiting for the Blizzard train to drop off a fresh shipment of high fantasy and solid gameplay. Deliver it they did, but not without its bumps and bruises. I mean, I've never experienced an MMO launch without its fair share of problems. Though not quite on the same level as what we see from almost every AAA launch in this day and age. Anyways, I'm not sure what to say about World of Warcraft that hasn't already been said. So I will just try to relay my experiences and memories as best I can and maybe something will come out of it that you haven't heard before or perhaps it will just be a pleasant trip down memory lane. Which seems to be what most of this series is turning into anyways, and I'm okay with that. Prior to its MMO release, the Warcraft series was a top-down strategy game with established characters, storylines, and fanbase. Unfortunately, I was not one of them. My interest came from time spent in Diablo 1 and 2 and Starcraft, which established my initial trust in Blizzard as a maker of quality games. So when I heard about World of Warcraft, which was after I had already played Star Wars Galaxies and had the MMORPG bug, I was very excited. Because the fantasy genre has always piqued my interest and curiosity. It's like a creative outlet that doesn't stray too far from reality, but strays just far enough to forget about it, if only for a spell. Well. With the Fellowship of the Ring fresh in my mind, I would often visit the World of Warcraft website to see if I was chosen for the closed beta, and to daydream of epic adventures as a muscle-bound, meatball dwarf with a massive beard, or a shape-shifting elf that could intimidate their foes with bestial roars. My imagination loves the world-building and romanticized possibilities when I'm excited for a game to be released. So for the first time ever, I pre-ordered a collector's edition, which I would later get rid of during a move just shortly before World of Warcraft Classic was announced a few years ago, and I regret it to this day. I still have the art book, in-game pets, and I believe the original soundtrack CDs are somewhere in a box, but alas, I believe I threw out the original collector's edition box, the cloth map of Azeroth, and installation discs. C'est la vie, I guess. When the game was finally released, I remember picking it up from a local GameStop, and after a lengthy installation, my brothers and I played throughout the night. I wish I could tell you what my first character was, but I honestly couldn't recall. It was definitely a dwarf, and I'm going to assume a hunter, because of my affinity for wanting to be a friend of all animals, but I really don't remember. What I do remember though, is immediately falling in love with my surroundings and wishing the music could have been on loop. Which wasn't an option at the time. Dunmoreau is the Dwarven starting area, and considering WoW was released in November, it was the perfect zone to fit the pre-holiday and winter vibes. And I want to come back to this thought on vibes, but let's move forward a little bit for now. So after a brief amount of time had passed, days, maybe a week or two, one of my brothers wanted to switch sides and play as a Horde character. So I followed. We eventually settled on the Skywall server, and with many failed attempts at other classes, including the time when my brother and I tried duo orc Victory warriors that we referred to as the Barbarian Brothers, for anyone who remembers that film. The Barbarians. Well, I ended up where I started, but swapped the dwarf Be good. for an orc hunter. Zug -zug. We found a guild of jovial, like-minded people, which would later merge with another smaller guild wanting to accomplish higher-end content, and we appropriately named this new guild Osmosis. And, with our newly formed team, 
we were able to vanquish mighty foes that were once perceived as impossible. Enormous, fire-engulfed monsters bent on world domination, conniving dragons living in secrecy, and old gods seeking to renew their control over our people. We had some fantastic adventures, and I wish I had the wherewithal to record videos and keep screenshots from those times but I tend to lean towards stored memories in my head over cluttered hard drives, but I'm beginning to see the value in both. The value of being able to physically look at what events in time were taking place with some form of accuracy, coupled with the value of a nostalgic, albeit sometimes rose-tinted, Rolodex to bring about feelings attached to these events. So when recalling this older version of World of Warcraft, there seems to be an endless amount of material to look fondly on. The lengthy and almost story-driven dungeons will always hold a special place in my heart, as will the leveling experience, and who doesn't get a spark of nostalgia when you see and hear? Which brings me back to the earlier topic of vibes. This is what I think about most when I look back on those days, locked away in a bedroom late into the night, accomplishing multi-leveled or simple quests with a backdrop of distant mountains, claustrophobic forest canopies, forgotten monuments, and a soundtrack that all aided in telling a story specific to each area you proceeded to explore and uncover, happening upon locked treasure or secret items that offered a new quest to discover. What can I do for you? The world felt expansive, deep, and for the most part crafted with a thought beyond copy and paste, which I'm sure still happened, but I, I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. It took my mind away from reality and engrossed me in a way that I feel I've been chasing from one MMO to another ever since. It's why I almost always inevitably returned to Azeroth after the multiple times that I decided to walk away. The first of which was during the very first expansion for the game in 2007, around two and a half years after I initially set foot on the snow-covered crags of Dunmoreau. A much younger, more immature version of myself would have you believe that Group Finder and the trend of Flavor of the Month class balancing is what drove me away, but I think it was more so that I felt like World of Warcraft was becoming too popular for me. And when something becomes a little too cool, I used to take the against the grain approach of bashing it for no reason other than my own insecurities, creating a narrative that fit what I wanted so I could be more comfortable with what I was feeling, which I don't recommend by the way. But ultimately, I think I was just getting bored and I gave myself a reason to move on. And move on I did, but not necessarily to anything better or more fun. In fact, I would argue that this lost traveler, although experiencing something new, was having a worse time than if he had just stuck it out in Azeroth. What I mean by that is, I started to game hop in my search for what I had already found, but my stubborn personality was choosing to ignore. Now, that's not to say that I didn't create some fond memories with the preceding MMOs, because I did. But they were never long-lasting, I'm afraid. Which will lead us to a mashup, or amalgamation, of several games that the Lost Traveler will dive into for the next episode. See you then.